started. Good rising and great awakening. And welcome to Kimbatone Self Care Webinar Series. And tonight we're going to continue our theme of Open Your Money Flow with Self Care. And tonight we're going to cover some of my favorite topics in healing crystals, essential oils, fountains, and waterfalls. We are in the middle of the Open Your Money Flow 40-day intensive, so I am really uh, inspired about the subject today. Kimitones is a sound healing system that uses tuning forks for healing. It's similar to acupuncture, only we use sound instead of needles. We use acutonic tuning forks, and each tuning fork is tuned to a different planet. That's why it's a cosmic sound healing. And also, at Kimitone, each tuning fork is tuned to a planet and to a different cosmic force, or Netaru or Arisha, such as um, Set, Sekhmet, Asar, Aset, uh, Geb, Jehuti, etc. And then we can also call on the Arisha, such as Yimaya, Shango, Oya, and Oshun, etc. So it's a cosmic sound healing. And then we um, use astrology for doing the sound healing sessions. But we use Hedoscope, which is a 13-month sidereal hermetic astrology system that was developed by yours truly. Uh, the astrology system you're familiar with is based on the motions of the Earth around the Sun in one year. And it's uh, a man-made system. They just divided each segment of the orbit around the sun, well, they divided the sun into 12 equal segments. It's not based on, you know, the actual motion of the sun. It's based on the earth going around the sun, and they, they divided the orbit into 12 equal segments and named each segment, each section after a constellation. So it's an earthly uh, reading, but not an, a stellar reading. But we still use this information. It deals, it, this information, or well, this system is about how you move about the earth, but it's not about your destiny. Your destiny would be based on the motion of the sun and the planets through the constellations. And there's 13 constellations. The 13 constellation is between the sign of Scorpio and Sagittarius, and it's called Ophiuchus. So if you want more information on that, you should write to me. Or you could go to tachia.com and just click on Heruscopes. Or you could just go to heruscopes.com. H-E-R-U-S-C-O-P-E-S. And then over here on the right is a picture of me, Tachia, when I was at this crystal store in Chicago a few weeks ago. The crystal store, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. It's called the Crystal Pyramid or the Age of Eleven. But it's located in Harper's Court right next to the Afro Bookstore, book and I love going to Harper's Court. Well, I used to when I was a young person, a young child. We would always ride our bikes there and hang out. Now it's turned into like a, you know, glamorized shopping center. But I have really good memories when I go there. And anyway, that particular crystal is one that I picked up at that crystal shop, and now I keep that crystal on my computer at all times. I've been working with... Um, removing energy blocks, and I've been treating my laptop, my computer, my Wi-Fi, my internet connection as something sacred rather than just getting mad at it when it doesn't work. And it seems to be, you know, um, responding well. It's just another form of energy, just like money. It's no sense being mad at money or hating money. It's just energy. And if, if, you're not, if it's not working for you, it's because you don't know how to work it. So... You know, gratitude, awareness, stuff like that makes a huge difference. It goes a long way. So anyway, uh, <laughs> um, I'm originally from Chicago. I lived in Austin, Texas for a long time where I started playing music, became a musician, 
then moved to California for the music and in California I learned about sound healing so now I'm practicing music and sound healing and um, it's just wonderful to combine my love and gifts in music and astronomy and astrology and healing and it's just so rewarding and satisfying um, I studied astronomy at UT Austin with the vocal alert I studied uh, uh, galactic astronomy and then when I got to California I started developing the Hadoscope system and lots of stuff happened in between but anyway I've always been an astronomer astrologer in this lifetime so here is the, oh, let me see if there's a question. Not, every now and then I'll just check with the um, chat room, see if there's any new attendees or questions in the chat room. And uh, I welcome all of you on the call now and all of you that will be listening in on the replay. So here is the uh, Hedoscopes, well, this is the astrology.com, astrology13.com chart for this evening and now we'll have a little bit of a hydroscopes analysis so uh, things haven't really changed that much since last week we still have this activity going on in Asphalia with Ra, Hetedu, ooh, Hetedu and Jehuti all in the sign of sidereal Virgo that's Sun, Venus and Jupiter I mean Mercury let me put on my glasses <laughs> Sun, Mercury, and Jupiter in um, Sidereal Virgo. And then here in the sign of Ma'at, we have Heteru, or Venus, in the sign of Libra. Uh, Saturn, or Raisan, is still in Ophiuchus, in Hotep. And this is my favorite alignment right now. Pluto and Mars in Sidereal Sagittarius, and that would be Asar and Set in um Simare or a moon. Speaking of moon, that is the only planet that has changed since last week, and now the moon is in the sign of Sagittarius. And pretty soon it will have a full moon. It gets over to Pisces. So the moon is in, oh, this isn't Sagittarius, this is Capricorn. Excuse me. The moon is in Capricorn, which is Hupeneus. And we have Chiron is still on the cusp here between Aquarius and Pisces. Neptune and uh, Uranus are still like crisscross because Neptune is in Aquarius and Uranus is in Pisces. And uh, like I say, the only thing that's really changed is the moon. So we'll just talk about that a little bit. The moon in Hadoscopes is symbolized symbolizes the cosmic force of Shasheta, the librarian, the writer, the scientist, the builder, the reckoner of time. Um, uh, she developed a ritual called the stretching of the cord, which is done before any construction was done when, you know, building the pyramids and the temples. And um, this planet being in the sign of Capricorn, Hupeneus. Well, the moon represents the personality, and um, since Shasheta is a builder, to me it represents building a strong character. <clears throat> Using sacred geometry and astrology and uh, all the sciences, sciences really to assist us in building a strong personality and character. And being in the sign of Capricorn, Ideal Capricorn. Excuse me. Capricorn is represented as a um, a he goat. So that's a uh, oh, he's not a he goat. I think it's a goat fish, something like that. Yeah, goat fish, like a mermaid, but it's a goat. And um, that represent it doesn't represent um, cloning and stuff like that. It just represents an energy that um, is persistent and climbs mountains and can digest, process anything, 
can swim in any type of water or situation or current. That's what it represents. And so during this, uh, this period, we have the opportunity to strengthen our character and personality by tuning into this energy. That's what uh, Hadoo Scopes is all about, is utilizing the planetary arrangements and alignments to assist us in our healing journey. So that's the Hadoo Scopes analysis for today. Um, using our, our will, our determination, our perseverance, our ability to swim through all situations and circumstances, and using that to build a strong personality and strong character. So that's pretty much the other scopes. We can, if you're interested in the other alignments, you can look at previous sessions. I spent a lot of time talking about Set and Asar, and a lot of time speaking about these four planets because they've all been just going through some really powerful um, transforms. Oh, the other thing to notice is how um, all the planets are like on one half of the chart. This whole space is not being uh, utilized. So uh, that means that we're going to have to work really hard at, at bringing about some balance because, you know, the whole point is to remain balanced. Luckily, we have had to do in the sign of Ma'at to assist us. So that would mean just really, um, really seeing the beauty in all things to bring about balance. So uh, that's going to be the, the intention for this evening. Okay, so I'm just going to, to skip through the uh, from last week. And we're just going to focus on um, the other subjects, the crystals, the essences, things like that. So let's just, well, let's return to the, uh, well, I guess it's time for the camera, huh? Time for the camera. Okay. Let's use the other camera. This one looks better. And yeah, there we go. Oh. Let me use the other camera. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to use this camera now. And then in the background, we can have the waterfall. Yeah, so I'm um, just going to be jumping all around this session, obviously. Uh, I just want to draw your attention to the Open Your Money Flow website. Um, this, page. this page is for the people that are taking the, um, the class. Okay, so here we have the Open Your Money Flow website, and um, you know there's a lot of resources here for you. This is the front page, and here you can see what the um, recent blog posts are. I've got the Abundance Creed here, Four Spiritual Laws of Wealth, Paying Your Bills. This was a really good article. I used this one today when I had to pay some bills. I turned on, I lit some candles, I um, turned on the aromatherapy, and I put on the waterfall music, and there's a, uh, a prayer or affirmation you can recite when you're paying your bills. So that is something I really recommend, is um, spending time with this website. And um, on this page, the Prosperity Plan, you can take yourself through the Prosperity Plan. It's got the, all the, um, the affirmations, and you just do one a day for 10 days, and then you do that four times. So you go through 40 
uh, affirmation, but it's 10 statements and you repeat each one four times over the 40 days. So here it is here if you want to do that yourself. Um, the people that are going through the program with me right now are we're all having great results. And I'm not sure when I'll be doing it again, but if you stay close, you know, to the mailing list, um, you'll find out when the next one is. And then also we have here um, a list of affirmations, abundant affirmations, which I am adding to frequently. And um, I'll be making a few abundance videos of my own where these uh, affirmations will be recorded and you can just listen to them. You don't have to read them or anything. You can listen to them and um, read along with them. And then over here is the Strength and Resources page. And this page has some, um, some really important books for when you're on your uh, prosperity journey. We have The Richest Man in Babylon. And you can read it here or you can listen to the audio on YouTube. There's nothing to watch. It's just audio. You just listen to it. And then also we have um, Think and Grow Rich, full audio by Napoleon Hill, also on YouTube. And then down here, well, there's just a few other resources for you. But down here are uh, some of my favorite waterfall sounds on YouTube. Let's try this one. And there's plenty more I'll be adding as time goes on. Oh, wait, I don't know if they'll let me use it. Okay. So we'll still have it playing in the background. Okay. There's also one that's just waterfall. Let's see. Oh, wait. Yeah, here we go. It's just a pure waterfall. Which is going to be a commercial at the beginning. The day after chemo, you could be home <laughs> with your support system. Here, here, and here. It's too much. Okay. Yeah, this is just pure waterfall sound. One of the things that has been coming to me since doing all this abundance work is how connected I am to the sound of the waterfall. And so I have um, decided to program my mind to respond to the waterfall sound as a reminder of my abundance. That's why I am um, like having the waterfall sound on all the time. I was going in my house pretty much all day. I have a fountain going for a while. So, um, one of the things I wanted to point out is I found this really great tea, root chakra tea, um, that has all the herbs in it that are good for healing your root chakra. And if you've um, already studied with the tea book, the tea book, you know that the root chakra is where our trauma is stored and also where our financial security and abundance and um, yeah, security and abundance is stored. 
So if we have been affected by trauma in the past, then that could create a block in our mind. So that's why it's important to use uh, things that help deal with the trauma. So first thing on my list is group Um Now I've got these really great uh, this is right here. This is root chakra box flower essences, but they added sound to it. So when they when they gather the flowers, they also um, how record the sound of the flowers. And so that supposedly gives an extra the waterfall is still a little too loud. Yes, even the sound of the waterfall is like invigorating for me during it. So, uh, so what you do with this is you spray it in your hand. It comes out red. And then you rub it in your hand, the palm hand, and then you just go do some uh, energy work in your aura field, especially in the root chakra area. And it's really felt that I wish you smell it through the, um, through the internet. And it's all natural, so you can, you know, then help. And uh, let's see if I can find the web page. They have them for all the chakras. Chakra oil. These natural plants are the essential oils, vegetable plant oils, and natural plant colors have been combined to form a unique signature of plant vibration, including precious stone vibrational oils and bio sound. These all have a sympathetic resonation upon each individual chakra, but can also be used in a chakra balancing therapy. Alternatively, they can be blended in with other oils from the soft therapy, remembering that one press upon the applicator is more than enough for chakra treatment for added oils in massage therapy. So um, pretty soon you'll be able to get some of these floricology um, essences that have the sound of the flowers, the bioresonance included in the essence oil. And um, I really like working with them. So of course for opening your money flow then you would use the one for the root chakra and the throat. Because if you have a block in our root chakra, we than likely it's difficult to express ourselves. But people who are, um, you know, having to deal with our work, our true work, uh, asking for what we work, things like that. Okay. So that's the, uh, the bio resonance flower essence. Now, I've just recently gotten into doTERRA um, flower essences. And I just got this really amazing emotional aromatherapy kit. And uh, at first, I was like, you know, reading up on them and everything. But now I just put my hands over it and choose which one I'm going to work with. And I want to show you my, uh, my new toy. I'm so excited about it. I'm going to turn the computer to me around so you can see it. I shouldn't call it a toy, it's a tool. I can do this without dropping anything. Okay. Yeah. So, this amazing little device. Um, it's got a light. You can turn the light off and you just add water. I think you can see it. Oh, there, yeah. Okay. So you just um, take off the lid, add water. I want you to see this part though, so hold on. 
<laughs> Look at this. As you can see. I don't think the camera's picking it up too good. There. Kind of looks like, you know, magic oh, yeah, I see a cauldron or something like that. I can see it. Yeah. But it's this great little atomizer. And so I just pick um, one of these essential oils. I've been working a lot with the one for forgiveness. Mm. So I'm just going to get that one because that is something that's really crucial for um, You there? Okay. Okay, I made it back. Greetings. Uh -huh. Got booted out there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I was just um, giving a demonstration of this great little device that I have now for uh, the essential oils. And so I was just saying how um, I've got the forgiveness, one for forgiveness and console. And then you just um, take off the lid and add water. Then you add a little bit more water. Yeah. Put a few drops in. Uh -oh. like... yeah. Okay. <laughs> Put a few drops in. And it has a setting that it runs for two hours, four hours, one hour, and then you could also turn off the light. But I like the light, it looks so beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, so I've just really been um, enjoying this little device and working more with the um, essential oils. I don't know if I'm a waterfall fan. So that has been really uh, helpful to me to have that going on all the time. It smells mm. great, and I can feel the shift. Mm. So we, with this kit, we have, what do we have here? We have um, forgiveness. Um, what's this one? Control. And it's, oh, it's aromatherapy. Yeah, console. Oh, yeah. Um, peace. I just got this, so I don't know them all yet. Motivate. Nobody can see me yet. I can see you. Can you hear me? Huh. Can you see me now? Yeah. Okay. I can think I'm going to turn off the waterfall. I can see you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, the waterfall is too loud. There we go. Oh. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's see. That was um, peace. Oh, motivate. And cheer, like when you're sad. And the last one is passion, right? So um, these are blends that this company came up with to help, you know, deal with our emotions. Mm -hmm. And you can mix and match your own, you know. You have other ones. But I really like having that 
um, atomizer. Yeah. And then also there's a great resource that has which flower essences go with the emotion. Mm. So let's see. I'm just going to go through some of them here. Uh, it says um, cilantro is the oil of releasing control. I, sh- I need that one. I'm having trouble working with my gardener because <laughs> mm. I'm so used to doing everything myself. Right. Um, let's see. We have cinnamon, the oil of sexual harmony. Mm. Um, lemon, the oil of focus. Mm. And it also lists negative emotions and positive properties of each. Uh, lavender, the oil of communication. So, of course, we would use that on our throat chakra. Right. Uh, Marjoram, the oil of connection. Negative emotions, distrust, aloof, protected, distant. Emotional isolation, reclusive, emotionally cold, fear of rejection. Mm, Let's see that. Time, the oil of releasing and forgiving. Mm. Elaine, Elaine. It grows wild out by where I live. Mm. The oil of the inner child. Negative emotions, joylessness, overstress, grief, sadness, loss of a loved one, disconnected from inner child, positive properties, freedom, playful, intuitive, heart healing, emotionally feel, joyful, accepting. And then they have um, a whole section on blends. You know, when you can uh, combine them and um, let's see, anti-aging blend, the oil of spiritual insight. And then it lists ingredients. So even though uh, we may not know the exact proportion, we can utilize their, um, their suggestions for the blend. Hmm. Uh, this is the one, the calming blend, the oil of forgiveness. Lavender, marjoram, Roman chamomile, yang yang, and other essential oils. Negative emotions, resentment, unwillingness to forgive, bitterness, anger, sadness, criticism, perfectionism, positive properties, calm, accepting, forgiving, compassionate, receptive, and tender-hearted. So those are all. Um, those are some of the um, essences for, you know, putting together a formula for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. And then we could put these um, these essences in candles or salves, shampoo, mm-hmm. skin, skin conditioning. It's endless right. what can be done with these essential oils. Uh, let's see. The DNA repairing blend, the oil of transformation. Um, this one has frankincense, wild orange, lemongrass, thyme, summer savory, and other essential oils. Negative emotions, debilitated, discouraged, toxic, stuck, burdened by family patterns. Mm. Mm. Positive properties, repaired, balanced, transformation, rebirth, vitality, healthy, open to change. So there's lots more in this book. Um, Which one was that? What, huh? What was that last one? Um, DNA repairing blend. Mm-hmm. Uh, frankincense, wild orange, lemongrass, thyme, summer savory, and other essential oils. The oil of transformation. Okay. Um, so debilitate negative emotions. Debilitated, discouraged, toxic. Stuck, burdened by family patterns, and then positive properties, repaired, balanced, transformation, rebirth, vitality, healthy, and open to change. And um, let's see, what does it say here? The DNA repairing blend works emotionally as well as physically with the cycles of life and death and personal transformation. By putting off the old, we become free to experience the new. This is transformation. The DNA repairing blend supports the body's sick or damaged cells to either transition to death or to transform, repair, and renew. Through the health and support of this blend, 
Individuals can assist their bodies, cells, energy, and emotions in returning to a balanced, healthy, and authentic state. The DNA repairing blend is particularly supportive in releasing all types of negative family patterns which are recorded in the body itself in the DNA. It is especially suited for those who struggle with debilitating circumstances as it helps to relieve feelings of doubt, disbelief, despair, and burden. It teaches individuals to reclaim their life energy and to believe that change is possible. The DNA repairing blend supports the process of regaining health and vitality by encouraging the release of the old, the birth of the new, and the cycles of life, death, and rebirth. So that sounds pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I'm really looking forward to, you know, doing sound healing sessions on people and having, you know, choosing the right essences to have, you know, right. going out into the space while they're getting their treatment. Yeah. So um, let's see what else we got here. Mm, that sounds good. The repellent blend. The repellent blend was formulated as an insect repellent, but it also offers so much more. This blend helps individuals to stay calm in the face of danger or attack. Repellent blend strengthens the protective shield around one's body, helping them to feel safe. This is especially important for children and adults who unconsciously merge with other people's energy. Whoa. They may do this as a way to relieve others' burdens or to simply lighten the load in the environment. Regardless of the motive, this type of energetic merging weakens an individual's energy system. Babies and young children are especially susceptible, susceptible to trying to carry loved ones' feelings for them as they struggle to know which emotions are theirs and which belong to other people. This plan can assist, can assist an individual in separating their own energy from another's. While the confusion between boundaries is often unintentional, there are also those who would target or attack another person. The repellent plan teaches individuals to hold strong boundaries and not allow themselves to be pushed around. It imbues individuals with courage and confidence to stand up for themselves and face their attackers. The ingredients are lemon, eucalyptus, citronella, and other essential oils. Negative emotions, unprotected, attack, defenseless, poor boundaries. Positive properties, courage, standing up for self, self self-contained, safe, strong boundaries. So even though it's talking about putting up a shield, it's really important yeah. for um, having a money flow to be able to, you know, protect your money, protect your flow, protect yeah. your, your energy, you know, like from psychic attacks. Right. And, and, the, oh. more, and the more money flow you have, the more protection you need anyway because, you know. Exactly. In there. <laughs> yep. That is exactly the truth. So, um, and there's even more information in this book here. Like I said, I just recently got this whole little kit, and um, I'm looking forward to sharing the oils with people. You know, if people want to try them, and if they want to buy them. And um, I'm really interested in seeing how it enhances the sound healing sessions. Like, I know I feel better just having it on, like, all the time. Yeah. And um, just experimenting with different combinations. But this is really good because it tells you which ones to use for which effect you're trying to get. So this is a book from the doTERRA group, Emotional uh, Emotions and Essential Oils. And, you know, we're talking about flow and emotions are energy and motion. And sometimes our emotions can block our flow. Mm -hmm. So anything that we can utilize to um, open up our flow is going to help us. Yes. Help us a lot. 
So, um, and then also, um, I have been working with flower essences from Kimmich. They're not essential oils because when they make essential oils, they use a distillation process and they use alcohol right. and other um, other things. I think doTERRA, though, they don't use alcohol, but it's still uh, a distillation. And the oils that I've been working with from Kimmich are flower essences. They are it's an ancient technique where they take like tons of flowers and just press them. Mm. And they collect the, um, the essence from that. And um, it comes out perfectly clear like water, but it's highly potent. And like perfume factories buy these essences from Kemet and then, you know, add chemicals and preservatives and colors and put it in fancy bottles and then charge like a $1,000 when you can just get the essences directly from Kemet. Mm. And so I've been um, getting them from Kemet and then mixing them with organic oils that are good for the skin and the hair. Mm. So you can use them, you know, it's pure in your bath water or like this um, aromatherapy device or uh, just, you know, to smell good. And they're pure flower essences. So. Um, using the ones that, like mentioned in the book here, um, that are, you know, for opening your flow, that's another type of energy you need to work with. And then the, um, the chemitones, the downhilling tools, they also have a complete line of planetary blends that they have put together based on the different properties of the, uh, the plants and the planets. So I have one for the sun, one for the moon, one mm -hmm. for Jupiter. So then if you're like wanting to open your flow, you could use the ones for the um, netters, like for Ra or uh, Hetheru or um, Nebethet, you know, the goddesses of the flow, Aset, and things like that. So those are different ways you can use um, the essential oils or flower essences or scents to help open your flow. There's so many uh, varieties and formulas and uh, companies. There's also, I, I talked about the, um, the spray, the box flower spray with the sounds added to it, but there's also just straight up box flower remedies that um, can help support opening your flow. Mm. So those are some of my um, favorite, you know, tools for essences and things like that. And uh, it was good. So the next thing would be crystals. And um, crystals and stones. Uh, I was just recently at the crystal store in Chicago and I picked up some beauties. They're just like, I don't even know what it is. I was just drawn to it. I think it's just quartz. Well, not just quartz, but it's quartz. Oh, I like it because it has a little tiny piece of amethyst in oh. there. <laughs> and then I got a bigger one, similar, same, you know, but they just, you know, first I wasn't paying attention to them because they weren't, like, pretty, you know. Right. And then I was getting ready to leave and I said, wait a minute, what, what is that? Wow. And I just the raw grabbed one. it. What? I said the raw ones. I said I love the raw ones. I love the raw ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're raw. That's what, that's what it is, they're raw. So I had to get, and then I don't know what this pink is here, but um, I just really feel better when I have crystals around. Mm. I took all the, I had, I had some really nice ones inside my home, mm -hmm. but I took them out to the garden, and then at the end of the garden year um, season, they weren't, you know, they weren't suitable to bring back in the house. They had, you know, mold or yeah, uh, mold. Um, yeah. yeah, they just weren't ready. So I didn't leave them outside. I still clean them up. So now I'm starting to collect more for the house. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the um, the stones for opening your money flow um, would be any stones for the root chakra. And um, the most popular one is red jasper. I have a little red jasper heart here. And then I've got this um, pyramid a red jasper pyramid while I was at the crystal shop. And I don't know if you can see, but I dropped it. It was, you know, I was, I was going to say, you sit with it in your lap. Mm 
while you're doing your um, your work and let it heal your root chakra. And a couple years ago, I had got this beautiful heart, like big, solid, chunky heart. And I was driving with it in my lap, and I, I must have forgotten and got up somewhere and lost it. And so then I got this pyramid. Same thing, I was in the back seat of the car on the way home, had it in my lap, and um, we dropped off one of the passengers and said, oh, get in the front seat. I said, oh, but I'm not ready. I'm not ready. He said, come on, come on. You have to get in the front seat now. I said, oh, okay. So I picked up all my stuff, and, of course, this red jasper pyramid fell to the ground and chipped. So um, later know, that day, I ran into what? You know they say oh. when you, your stones chip and break, you're releasing their energy or their or their Oh, they're releasing the energy from the previous person or some of my energy? Just the energy of the stone. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, because she was telling me that um, she interpreted that I need to be more mindful of my um, my money and my root chakra, all the stuff that I'm working on, you know. So I figure that this is an improvement because the first time I had one, I lost it completely. And this time, just some of the energy, like you say, was released. So that makes me feel good, mm-hmm. you know, that I didn't, like, it didn't, I didn't lose it and it didn't completely shatter. Right. So um, I'm just working with it. And then I have some little ones for all the other chakras. And interestingly enough, the one for the first eye, the blue lapis lazuli, it chipped off, you know, a piece of it broke off here. So... <laughs> That's funny because so, um, all of my pendulums. What? What'd you say? I said that's funny because all of my pendulums are. Oh. Okay. So we're just releasing lots of energy through our crystals, basically. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I say, I just like to sit with it in my lap. I'm, I, I think the. I bought a new pendulum because I misplaced three of them here in my house. So while I was at the store, I bought a new one. And it's a little bigger, so it'll be it's harder to lose. Mm-hmm. But it's also a red stone. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's red jasper. It might be carnelian. It might be red jasper, but I couldn't get a confirmation. So um, it can be red tar- are, tar- Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me go get it. Maybe you can... I've seen it in the last video. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah, here it is. I thought I had misplaced it again, but it was in my purse. Yeah, I take it with me everywhere, like when I'm out shopping and I don't know what to do or what to get. I say, oh, should I get this? Is this vitamins, you know, da da da? Should I get this? Is that, you know? So I use it for everything. So this is, um, I don't know if you can see what it is. It's kind of red with a tinge of green. And uh, I'm not really sure what it is. But it's big enough so that I don't lose it, you know? It's like, mm-hmm. so I think it's the right size. I've been using it a lot. So, oh, and then I got these two because I couldn't resist them. I don't know what they are. This one. Um, they had a big one, and it was $250, so I said, well, I'll get this little one and work up to it. <laughs> I can't really tell what it is, but I love it. And then this That's one I got. Red. It, red. No, this one is black and gold. It's not, it's more like grounding. Because black ones are good, too, for the root chakra. And then this one, it was just pretty. I don't I don't know what the name is. Yeah. But it's yeah. just really good. Yeah. It's got some red in it. It reminds me of watermelon. So I had to, <laughs> I had to get it. <laughs> Pretty. So, but mostly for the, for the for opening your flow, you know, the um, rich, uh, rich chakra work would be red jasper and black tourmaline. I have a beautiful piece of red carnelian over here. And my black tourmaline. Oops. Or, uh, ruby is ruby is red, but that's more for the heart chakra. This yeah. one is um, a red car, uh, carnelian. 
it's red, but that one's more for the womb. It's kind of orange. Orange. Yep, yeah, I have a carnage. Yep, yeah, I have a carnage. Yeah, yeah, kind of. And then here's my beautiful black tourmaline, which is also for the root chakra. Yeah. Open your flow. So, so, and that's, you know, those are the stones that I work with um, mostly for my root chakra. Okay. So, yeah, so my, my, my new thrill is these flower essences and essential oils and that uh, atomizer. <laughs> It's yeah. just so, it looks so like I don't know. At nighttime, it like glows. Right, I bet it smells <laughs> like, good. Oh yes, it smells so good, so good. Okay, so now we're gonna switch over to the uh, actual. Okay, so for the sound healing today, we're mostly dealing with um, uh, opening our flow, dealing with the root chakra and the throat chakra. That's what we're going with today. Oh, and I didn't do any... Um, Invocation. So I think uh, last week we worked on the goddesses. Today I'll just do that, uh, the Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Tefnut, come to me, come to me, Tefnut. Tefnut, come to me, come to me. Tefnut, come to me, come to me, Tefnut. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Yes, Tefnut is the goddess of moisture and she's also the lady of the flame. So that goes right in alignment with my um, strategy for dealing with steam and, um, you know, uh, water and light and fire. Um, we're light beings and trapped in watery encasements. It's right in alignment with um, all these ideas that have been coming to me since we've been doing this 40-day intensive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, I <laughs> think so. You remind me of a dream what? that I had last night. You what? I said it just reminded me of a dream that I had last night. And it was it was oh, really, really? really quick. But it was like um like 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 four light bodies. And it was like and it was like but they had like streams like like up into the heaven. Yeah. Like but they were like, you know, Wait, I lost you. And then what? It was, you know, like, light body had, like, thing, like from your head. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I've been having lots more um, visual, visual of light beings. Like, like when we do the energy flow analysis of calling the conduits of light. Mm -hmm. And then I got that, um, that little uh, meme about the Care Bears, like, when somebody says sending love and light, oh, they yeah. send all the Care Bears sending off. <laughs> yes. And, um, last night, or was it last night? Yeah, last night I was doing a visualization about connecting with my inner male. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I realized that, um, you know, at all these different ages of my life, I was not connected with my inner male. And mm-hmm. it started, it was really sad. And mm. then, uh, then I saw, you know, now I'm connected with my inner male. And then when I looked at all the areas of my life again, I could see, like, you know, the, the little male and female of me at different ages. And it, it was like all this light, like I was surrounded by all these light beings. And it was really just me at different ages of my life. And they said that's a really good meditation is to see yourself surrounded by you at different ages all around, even... You know, like, like I'm I'm up like halfway around. I'm at 50, and then see the ones behind me, the ones that I haven't haven't done yet. Mm-hmm. And so, but you see, like the light, like you were saying, you just see the light coming from all of them, and and sending their love to you. So, I've been seeing a lot of that in different, you know, different um, situations. But it's the same thing. Just like you, you see the light coming out, and it's great. <laughs> Because we're light beings also, but right. we're trapped in these watery encasements. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of what I've been working on, too. That's good. <laughs> it's good when you can remember dreams. I don't remember dreams. I just have flashes. I usually day, don't, though. But... Oh. I know when I remember them, they oh, mean something. Them, they mean oh. And I wrote it down, too. Wrote it down, too. That's good. Well, now it's going to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So then let's go on with the sound healing session. I know um I know you can't always hear it, but the idea is if people have their tuning forks or they're doing crystals or rock safety, they can see where the um tuning forks go. So it's just the nature of the of the session. So we always start on the feet either the, um, the ball of the feet or the ankle or both. We have one on the ankle and one on the ball of my foot. You do whatever you do on one side of the body, you do on the other side. And you wait, um, you know, wait till the vibration stops, wait about 10 seconds and then, um, do the same on the other side. One on the inner of the ball of the foot, middle of the ball of the foot, and the other one on the ankle bone. That's for grounding. Okay. And then we do the uh, the womb chakra, the sacral chakra. And when I do these uh, self-care sessions, I do them for myself, my family, my neighborhood, my community, my nation, and the planet. So I'm sending all this intention out, not just my self-care, but planetary. That's my intention. And there's no distance and there's no time in reality. So even people who... um, Watch the replays, receive the benefits of the session. Then you connect the womb chakra with the heart, where you're grounding your desires in with your purpose. Okay. So for this session, we're going to be focusing on opening the flow and um, utilizing the planetary energies from the um, chart earlier today. So that was mostly um, the moon in Capricorn, and then a star and Set, or Pluto and Mars in Sagittarius. Sagittarius. And we always start with Anku and Nebenhet. Those are the four times in Nebenhet. So I'm just doing the uh, root chakra, and. Um, you know, for the root chakra, you can just hold the forks over your root chakra area and downward motion. So I'm removing any blocks to my root chakra right now. When you're moving upwards, you're eliminating blocks. And when you move down, you're creating and manifesting. So I'm opening the flow. 
by this little motion right here. And then since I'm doing, um, just working on the root chakra and the throat chakra today. So I can heal in trauma in my root chakra and also my creativity chakra. And then express my truth. That's the intention. And then I can do, you know, the chakra, chakra to chakra. Okay, I just felt a knot untie in my tummy there. <sighs> okay. <coughs> then what we had, we had um, Capricorn and the moon. Um, what was this? This is just a bit of a full moon. So the new moon is for Shashetta and this one is for Capricorn. And this is good because I have entered into my second Saturn's return. So it's always good for me to work with Capricorn and Saturn energy. So right now I'm releasing, I'm opening up any obstacles I have to my stability and security. So that means chaos. <clears throat> so I'm uh, working to establish the flow with my uh, possessions and my finances, my property that is safe and secure, and there's no obstacles to my flow. No obstacles to my financial freedom. And I make wise decisions when it comes to my finances. It's easy for me to talk about money. It's easy to be assertive, building a strong personality that can take care of my money, take care of my abundance, and look after my investments with grace and ease. And I can create new ways to generate revenue using my creativity and my voice. And that's the intention. And then we have the... Um, Mars and Pluto, or Set and uh, Asar. So this this combination, um, to me, it symbolizes we've conquered our struggle with our ego, with our lower self, and means we've united with the divine, and um, now we're able to uh, guard and protect. You know, after Set goes through all his tribulations, he becomes the head of the boat of Ra, and he's the one that, um, you know, protects the journey of the bark. And then Asar, of course, he was, um, he was tricked by his brother Asar, by his brother Set, but thanks to the wisdom of Aset, he was tricked by his brother Set, and thanks to the wisdom of Aset, he was transformed, he to transform himself into immortality. So, um, you know, the lessons of that story is we have lots of obstacles and challenges, but if we prevail and stay persistent, you know, we can reach um, eternity or enlightenment. You know, our body will die, but we never have to. We can just keep on going and glowing. That's, that's the whole idea. Um, also, it means to me... Um, Turning something that's seemingly negative into a positive situation, transforming poison into medicine. So that is the intention going into um, this part of the session. So I'm like, I have a in between my root chakra and my creative chakra. I'm just uh, moving it around to, uh, you know, eliminate blocks and reestablish the flow, and then coming back down this way, manifesting 
the flow of abundance, manifesting unity and um, <coughs> serving the divine, no ego, you know, selfless service, trusting, being compensated for our service. And then you know, having the courage to express ourselves, you know, being shy and timid and fearful. These are all negative qualities of the personality. These are fetters of sex. And we want to be able to, you know, you don't know, want to blame the pyramid. We want to be able to, you know, express ourselves and receive our benefits, receive our compensation, receive payment. So we have to be able to ask. And if we're having trouble expressing ourselves, asking for what we need, then we might have a block in our lower chakra. So then we do one where we connect the chakra. Now we move to the um two more times here. A little bit of time. Well, okay, yeah, I'll just do the simple um uh, like opening the gates. It's one that's on the beach. You put um one tuning fork on the space between the toes, the webbing. Right here. <laughs> the space between your toe and then the space between your thumb and your finger. So you, you alternate. So you're going to put the fork on your right foot and put it on your left hand. So for that combination, I'll use um, this on poo with the new moon for opening the floor and removing blocks. So I'm going to put one on my left foot and the other one on my right hand. It's kind of complicated. There we go. And you can just do this like pressure points. If you don't have tuning forks, you can just use your fingers, crystals, stones, this, this particular placement is called opening the gates. And it's when you're um, getting ready to embark on a new journey or a new project, just to open the way. Okay. That's why we use the arm poo fork. That's right, open the way. <laughs> we got that one going on. And then... <coughs> Let's do this one to Saturn. Saturn and the new moon again. Not this time. So now I'm just doing Saturn and the new moon. And you can you can duplicate tuning forks like if you Sometimes you just you just go with the flow. <laughs> mm -hmm. You really there's really no mistakes, you know. Um, you can't hurt anybody with these sounds. And then we we'll switch directions. This time we're going to use the um, the right foot. I mean the left foot and the right hand. And I'll use similar for opening. The new moon and the zodiac. Right hand. Just open the way. Open the gate. Opening the gate for abundance to flow, for wisdom to flow, for uh, guidance to appear, for whatever is blocked, whatever is needed. This is how open the way.
And I will use um, Mars and Pluto. So no forks, no freaking two forks. Good. I'm still vibrating a little bit. Okay. And now we'll do the, um, the high frequency where you know, the audience can hear them. for the flow, removing obstacles and blocks to our creativity, our stability, opening the way to express our desires and manifest our vision. I had this one lady, she saw me doing one of these sound healing sessions, and she was already an energy healer herself, but she said that when she saw me using the uh, high frequency part like this, she saw me pulling things out of the patient. Like I was pulling out streams of light. Like you said, you saw them emanating from the light beam. She could see different yes. ones coming out. And I was like, nobody's ever told me that before. No, I don't, I don't see that. I feel it, though. I can feel, when I use these, I can feel like I'm you know, pulling out stuff. It's mm. awesome. Mm. <laughs> And then we'll use the same ones. We have the moon and Capricorn. So I'm going to feel some of that. I'm going to block from my computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better wipe <wide> by. <laughs> when I was coming across the, um, the security, they pulled out all my crystals and <laughs> never <laughs> and and took them back through the security. <laughs> oh, What's <okay>. it? <laughs> <laughs> And have a little baby high frequency fork for the goddesses. That's so cute. These are really the asteroids. But the goddess fork. Sending out positive vibration. <laughs> That's the care bears. <laughs> okay, and we have a little bit of time. There you can see my segment up there.
Okay. Okay, so that is the little sound healing session for this evening. And um, I have an, another appointment coming up, so I think we're going to end this session quickly and then um, we'll just pick up next week. <laughs> so that is the Kimbatone self care uh, sound healing session for today. I really thank you for joining me today. So I'm not here. You know, just by myself, and I will post the replays for other people to catch them in the future. And I'll be back here next week with more on opening the flow for your with your self care. So, do you have any questions for now? I do not. Hotel. Okay, hotel. So I'm gonna sign off from this one and then get ready for our call. All right. Okay, peace. All right. Peace, peace and love. Peace.